no, I'm not doing it the entire way with this mask on my face. I really did try different ideas. So we're gonna go through Adam, if you didn't know, Adam. And I'm not even gonna ask the question, is Adam a narcissist? Because I truly believe that they just went through the DSM and chose every single trait of narcissism and gave it to Adam. I think I'll actually miss some. You can let me know in the comments below all the ones I may have missed. So let's go through it together. All of Adam's most fabulous narcissistic traits and what to do about them. My dad asked me if I could meet you. Yeah, I know. Okay, well, it's nice to meet you. Totally, nice to meet you too. Oh. Ha! I got you, did you see that? Good sh Looking down upon others, even just eating when someone else comes in, showing that this meeting is so unimportant to you that I'm gonna like munch on something and then right away off the bat, trying to destabilize them, trying to mock them, trying to show I am better than them with that thing of her expecting him to be there in a respectful way and he's not and then making fun of her about it. That type of stepping on others to try to make yourself seem even greater, even better is one of the defining terms of a narcissist. And they do this often right off the bat so that they kind of set the playing field of themselves higher on the hierarchy than you. And often they're doing it by actually stepping on other people to get there. That I really want to talk to you about. We got time. How about some lunch? You'll love it. Uh, thanks. <laughs> I got you again! <laughs> Hilarious! <laughs> How Adam is so preoccupied with himself, he thinks that this is brilliantly funny and expects that everyone else does as well. His level of self-importance is just kind of overflows and spills out everywhere. And interestingly also, all of his jokes are kind of infantile, like he's been stunted in growth. A lot of people that are dealing with narcissism, it's because they've gone through a type of injury or harm or something has stopped them from being able to naturally mature to a higher developmental level. So often their jokes and manner of speech can sometimes be at a teenage or even lower developmental level. And so you end up with this disjoint of them thinking things that everyone else has kind of moved past, but they're stuck there. And that's often because the reason that they're a narcissist is because they've gone through their own trauma or damage or become so self-inflated that they're not able to really deal with reality in a clear way. You know, when you take her out for the fifth time and she still expects you to pay the check, but you're like, hey, I thought you wanted equality. And narcissists have a wonderful way of making everything that people talk about, about them. They believe that they are the most interesting or needy or that all the attention should be drawn to them. So even if you bring up a story, they will make the story about them. And it's kind of interesting because if you talk about yourself or anything else, they kind of turn off. Like they're no longer paying attention. And then if you bring up their name, suddenly they perk up and they want to talk about it again. And so here Charlie has come for this meeting for her where she wants to speak and Adam is spending the entire time telling his own stories, going through his own narrative and believing that he is the most interesting man, creature in the room. No, oh, our shared problem of overpopulation in hell. Oh! And you see, Charlie's exhaustion, that's often what happens when you're dealing with someone that has narcissistic traits and not everyone that has narcissistic traits have them to the level of Adam. Adam is kind of this prototype of the worst case of a narcissist. And we'll go into a little bit also of what made Adam such a narcissist or what could be the things that made Adam such a very strong narcissist. Well, that's not a problem. Those are my people. You know that, right? Oh yeah. That must suck for you. <laughs> The other piece that often leads to narcissism are low levels of empathy. Though a narcissist, and depending on the type of narcissist, can feel a lot for themselves, they often don't feel a lot of empathy for others because they believe that they're superior. Right away when we separate ourselves from the group, we can look at ourselves as being better than, more value, more worth, and look upon everyone else as lower life forms. And that depends on what we see as value. So they may actually treat people that they look up to because they have more money or status or whatever is the thing that this person looks towards as better and treat them with pseudo respect, like somewhat of respect, they don't to those that they see beneath them. And there definitely is this tiered view 
because they have this deep superiority complex. And because of that, they can actually do horrible things to other people and not feel bad at all or even feel like they deserve it because they were great like they were, then this wouldn't happen to them. Human souls just the same as the ones you have up in heaven. They are not the same. They earned damnation. You're wrong. Sinners made mistakes, sure, but everyone makes mistakes. That us and them, that making some people a them other than us, allows us to demonize them quite literally very easily. People have used that in order to do horrible things to people. And that's what's happening in this show. So what I really love about Husband Hotel is it's trying to teach us to have empathy for everyone, even those that seem irredeemable or that we would look down on, that we're all not so different. And I love that we have Charlie who epitomizes empathy and the juxtaposition of Adam who is without any and feels actually good and gets pleasure out of harming those that he sees as less than. Angels don't make mistakes. You really think that? I know that. Yeah, I've never made a mistake in my life. And it's really hard when you're dealing with someone that has such strong belief systems that it's actually this cognitive dissonance around a belief system. You can't really change it by arguing the truth or the facts. I like that Charlie didn't even try to, just kind of question that how could you even think that? Do you truly believe that you are perfect? And oftentimes someone that's dealing with these narcissistic traits and belief systems will actually say that they don't make mistakes. Why? actually they have a narcissistic injury. They do believe that they're flawed. They don't actually believe all of the things that they're saying. And if you actually crack that open, you can create a narcissistic injury, which will be very harmful for them. And in some cases of certain narcissism can be very dangerous where they will attack you very vehemently for questioning them or humiliating them. There's the question of fun. Extermination is entertainment. Often narcissists can get overly involved in what they're talking about, what they're doing, and kind of forget everything else is around them because they become so self-absorbed. And when they're sharing the limelight, they love that so much, no matter what this limelight is about. And suddenly it all becomes about them. But I have to say, that is my favorite part of the song. So Adam, yeah, you get a few dibs for that. The song is pretty amazing. I'm handling this right now! Wait! What was the Seraphim's one rule? No one but the exorcist can know about the exterminations. I know, fine. Often also, they don't feel that the rules apply to them. So people that are dealing with narcissism are often not only breaking the rules, not even feeling like they have to follow them in the first place. That's that superiority. When we talk about the type of narcissist where there's vulnerable, there's malignant, it would definitely be that Adam is kind of that grandiose narcissist that believes that everything in the world revolves around him. I never would have agreed to your yearly activities if I thought it would bring trouble to our doorstep. Keeping heaven safe was my only reason for allowing it. What do you want from me? I'm just one guy. Even when Sarah is talking, he's still sipping from his drink really loudly and doesn't even feel any shame about it. And that's another trait of narcissism is often they're shameless. They don't feel any shame. They can't feel shame. And I think that a lot of people that are more on the empathic level try to use empathy and understanding and that this is wrong because of these things for people that just don't feel that much shame. And this is often protective. The person that's gone through narcissism has been hurt in their past, often having very neglectful or harmful or violent parents, that they created this narcissistic shell in order to survive, in order to feel good enough because if not, they would kind of crack and crumble. And so these are the pieces that keep them together. I'm not looking for the blonde, babe. I'm looking for you. Do you really think I wouldn't recognize one of my top girls? You are on the front lines. It's why I named you after the best thing ever, Vaggie. Of course he did. It kind of goes back to that immature, I did laugh. It's true. I did laugh though, because I was like, the entire time I was like, is she named after what I think she's named after? And of course, that's what Adam would think. I guess I'll just tell little Miss Butterflies and Rainbows that she's been f***ing someone who's killed thousands of her people. I'm sure your relationship will be fine. See you in court. They will often use others to get what they want, use information as 
leverage so that they can control people. Underlying, they have a belief that people would leave them if it was for their actual qualities. And not everyone that is a narcissist is malignant or dangerous or violent. It's something that they often use as this shield because without these traits, if they didn't say how great they were, they feel that no one else would. And that's why they're often bragging when everyone says something nice about them. They're often posting that a thousand different times to try to prove to others, look, I have worth, I have value. And inside they're often very sad, often with a lot of abandonment issues. Are you really telling me you've never had a drink with friends at the end of a hard day? Uh, we don't have hard days, it's heaven. And the way that he speaks to people is so demeaning. His use of words in heaven where everyone else is kind of like supposed to be polite and thoughtful to others, he sees himself as beyond the rules, that he can get away with this. And because no one questions him, that is pretty much saying he can. Saying nothing is often complicit to say that's okay, I'm accepting this behavior. So remember that when someone's treating you disrespectfully or even abusively, it's your right to be able to teach people how to treat you and let them know if something is acceptable or not to you. Yeah, let's give him a chance. Very well. The court will allow it. Yes! I mean... So you see, Charlie swears and everyone looks at her sideways. He calls someone the B-word and no one says anything or even admonishes him. So he has garnered himself special privileges that other people do not have in this spot. He did everything on your checklist. He was selfless. He stopped Nifty from stealing and he stuck it to that Mothman. Well, uh, th then why isn't he here then? <laughs> when you confront someone with narcissistic traits, especially if they're strongly a narcissist, they can find that really angering and humiliating in such a way that if you question them, they may want revenge. And in some cases, it can be actually dangerous or violent. I think that Adam actually took this relatively well. Not because of Charlie. I think that if they were alone, he would have allowed his anger to kind of play out even more. But because he's around all the different seraphim, he has to watch his P's and Q's a little more than he would if not. Because they can have difficulty in managing their emotions and keeping them in check when they feel like they're being humiliated or judged or even laughed at or mocked. We're gonna go down and exterminate demon Destroy that ass! Prepare to slaughter every sinner in that hotel. And you all remember Vaggie. And often people that are narcissistic do not like to have anyone in their circle that will ever question them. And so they end up creating a whole bunch of psychophants around them. Their need to be able to be looked up to is so great that anyone even questions them or states something that's a differing opinion can be seen as someone that is against them or trying to harm them. Our brain doesn't notice the difference between emotional damage and physical damage. So they react if you say something against them, even if it's something small as you're doing this to harm me and that means you are against me and then that means you are the enemy and they will treat you like that and often they'll remember this for a really long time like years or decades even if for you you've completely forgotten it or if it was an offhand remark that you didn't even mean to make them feel hurt or slighted uh, uh, they appear to have some kind of shield sir uh, oh really i didn't see this giant shield in front of me you dumb no and they often mock others if someone questions them or states something, even if it's helpful, to get them in line. They use tools of bullying to try to make other people feel insecure so that they won't question them the next time. That's their way of controlling the people around them. And that can often be very harsh. And for people, when you're dealing with someone that has narcissistic traits, often the best way to handle it is actually not to play the game, to ignore to not give attention to because that's what they want. They want that attention. They want that engagement. They feel if you dismiss them that that's actually the worst injury that they could have, that they're not even worth getting into that discourse with. You think you're tough. I'm tougher than you. <laughs> you lack discipline, control, and worst, you're sloppy. Which are all often traits of people that are dealing with narcissism. That sometimes because of that, they're trying to control everything, but because of that, they're not in control. And that kind of makes them spin. But it's interesting for Alistair, who also has these antisocial personality disorder traits, 
And those traits also could apply to someone that is dealing with that. Though in this case, not for Alistair. He's actually relatively in good control. Ugh, I'm gonna wipe that sh eating grin off your face, cause radio is dead! What just happened? People that are now slighted and feel upset will often do that. They will go for the kill. Even if it's not warranted, often their reaction to being insulted or humiliated is just so much higher than what someone has done because for them, they see this as a insult to their identity. It's not, if they have a belief system and you insult that, it's not that you're insulting their thought. You're insulting them as a person. They often identify with different groups as who they are because inside they don't really know what their real identity is. So they often attach to other things that people carry importance with. And that makes them feel important because of it. That crazy mother fire. Oh, <laughs> ah, that could have been ugly. No! I don't I don't forgive him. I burst into chips, I'm not gonna lie. That one I really hurt. And the egg boys too. So this is what you've been up to since Eden? I gotta say you really let yourself go, buddy. Oh, you judging me? You're the most hated being in all of creation! When you have this false bravado all the time and you say it enough times to yourself, you often end up believing your own lies. You believe that you're invulnerable. And because you're surrounding yourself with yes people, that you just believe it. There's never a question in your mind that maybe I shouldn't, maybe I can't, maybe I'm not this great. And so because of that, you build this eggshell creation around you that when questioned can actually crumble. And that's why sometimes people that are very powerful make these horrible decisions because no one's ever told them no. And for Adam, he's the first man. He was the one that he believes is the archetype for everyone, that everyone should be looking up to him. And so he never really has been questioned. And that for Adam and for others can often create this narcissistic personality disorder where you end up building up this false sense of who you are and then you actually end up believing your own lies. And even believing positive things, in this case overly positive things, is not healthy or adaptive for survival in the world. You don't get to end this. I'm f***ing Adam. All of mankind came from these you all should be worshipping me, you ungrateful, disgusting f losers! And so you see that sense of this bravado that he, everyone should worship him, look up to him, thank him for their very existence. And often if you're raised by a parent that is narcissistic, it can be a really frustrating situation because they will never really apologize, never really recognize things. And it's really hard to get through to them that you are your own person with your own beliefs. And they will also never admit when they have made a mistake, even if it's really blatant, even if it's right in front of them, they will deflect, divert, and make it about something else. They have this injury that if they make a mistake, that they're flawed, that they're not perfect, then all of the house of cards, the lies that they've been built on will crumble and then people may leave them or question them or not want to be around them. And so they have to maintain this fakeness in order to keep people with them. And so because of that, they also can become exceptionally controlling, trying to control people with money, with power, and with fear. Nifty! And that is the end of my thoughts on Adam and narcissism. You can let me know what your thoughts are and which moments I might have missed in the comments below. And you can also help me choose if we're going to be doing Nifty, Husk, or Serpentius next. You can let me know in the comments below and help me choose who will be covered in the next video.